here, <laughs> if I'm being honest. The trend line for SSG very much favors this going all the way yep. to 12 rounds. And no matter who wins or if it's a draw, I do think it's going to be 12 rounds. In, in a matchup like this, I think it's likely. I think one of, th one of two things will happen, in my opinion. Either we're going to need all 12 rounds or it's going to be a very quick match for one of these two teams. Rogue yeah, definitely. is much better than their record shows. Space Station is much better than their record shows. One of these two teams will likely find their footing before this season ends. In fact, I would say that these two teams would also likely find their footing before this stretch of the season ends. And need I remind everybody that just a couple days ago, with the groups being drawn from uh, all of the 16 teams competing at the Invitational, that Rogue and Space Station both are in the same group. Yeah. So this is uh, going to be a really important match um, in terms of what is given away to each other when they go into that Invitational. Now, it's important to remember that following the end of the first out of the season and the transition into the Invitational, there will be a little bit of time for both teams to practice and come up with new things. And I'm sure that uh, they definitely will do that because nobody goes into an event like the Invitational. A sp no, into the Invitational specifically without a full lineup of new strategies and counter strategies to your opponent. If you do that, you are playing to lose. And since it's the biggest event for Siege in the year, period, nobody's doing that. So, we'll be going to Armory Lockers to start things off here on Border. And uh, the overall lineups here from both teams making a whole lot of sense. We're going to see a six pick into a Ying. I kind of like that. The IQ can be very useful on this map, but uh, the idea of the IQ will dissuade their opponents from uh, bringing a Valkyrie, so Attackers at least there is that. Pulse is still a factor that needs to be considered from Rogue, but uh, no have, or not having any of those cameras is going to be pretty huge. Ying is also going to be excellent when it comes to the actual site push, as I'm sure most of you know, with those Candelas being able to disrupt pretty much anybody. Because the Thermite is banned, it's going to be Habana played for probably every single one of these rounds. Thermite ban on border, we've talked about before. This is one of the best places to ban Thermite on. Yeah. Hands down, of, of any map, you can get rid of Thermite. You can really throw a wrench in your enemy's plans on left. this particular map. Space Station have to be given a lot of credit for the way Five that they have navigated remaining. the operator bans over the last couple of weeks. And obviously, it would probably be the brain trust and lichen as their coach and look at space station they banned jaeger a number of times because they know that when they're on attack they are great with their throwables they're great with their projectiles and it gets under the skin of their defense uh, of the defenders and their opponents now banning the thermite on rogue that's usually easily's play obviously easily can flex on over to the mana which is exactly what's going to happen but the way that teams play on border lives and dies off of the way that their hard breach is capable of doing good work. And Armory Wall being attacked by a Habana, usually far less effective than going over towards the office side. All that said, my theory crafting is for naught because it will indeed be an Armory take right off the hop. I mean, we've seen this actually a surprising amount where despite not having a Thermite, the attackers will still commit themselves to an Armory take. And I'm guessing the reason is when your opponent bans Thermite, they're clearly asking you not to attack Armory Wall. And when your opponent asks you not to attack Armory Wall, what should you do? Attack Armory Wall. Exactly. Because the setup for the defense will not be specifically for that. Vertical, good game sense there to get thinking name with a simple break on the bre or on the uh, barricade. And okay, that's weird. Clip's a little bit confused as to what just happened, but uh, luckily it was just an EMP, it wasn't a Candela. That would have really hurt Rogue's attack, but bouncing off of nothing, that's unfortunate. Yeah, an odd strategy here. Slash actually looks like that Candela might have fallen through the hole in the floor, but the second one will be just fine. Redeemer with a big two-piece to start things off, lined up inside of Archives, looking for a third. Trying to out-tussle, and there he'll go. He'll grab it on the shuttle. It's a lockout so far for Redeemer, with Vertical picking up his second kill on the Bosco from below. Rampy jumping in. Oh, former leading point getter in North America will be taken out by Vertical, who has three kills on the round. So you go, three for Redeemer, and three for Vertical with just a minute to go. So both players vying for a potential ace in this two versus two. <gasps> <laughs> 
and I'm going to start casting. Redeemer inside of B, and he's got a decent position to hold the site, but he's going to be very exposed to potential armory push. Vertical, the other person vying for that uh, 5k coming up from the north balcony as you can see it'll be a confrontation the flash though going to work very much in vertical's favor does he know though he doesn't and chala takes down vertical so no ace for either and it's a complete lockout for ssg as chala gets the final two great job to space station for holding out that round the red looked like he was about to go off the rails for Space Station with Vertical's very first kill and an opening pick on the Thinking Nate as well, shutting down some critical utility from SSG in order to stop a push in from Armory Wall. So, no ace. No ace for anybody. Chala ending the ace on both sides of the coin by getting a kill and then taking Vertical down as well. Can we say the curse is broken, or do you have to cast an ace for that to happen? I don't know. You don't know? He doesn't know. I don't know. All right, well... Space Station, take the first round. It was a good hold. Um, I think a big part of that, to me, is how those Candelas were useless. So there was one that went in the small office, and there were two that went on the wrong side of the main armory wall. <laughs> so none of the Candelas made it to lockers. Attackers have located a bomb. That's the end of that story. On top of that, um, even if the Candelas had gotten where they wanted to be, it's unlikely they would have actually influenced anything because Rampy, the one who held out the site for SSG, was really far away. He was all the way in the B-bomb site. So I don't think it would have mattered. Or, no, sorry, not the, yeah, no, yeah, it was the B-bomb site. I don't think it would have mattered in the, in the long run if the Candelas had hit. Uh, I don't think it would have changed the, uh, the outcome of the round. I think what needed to happen there was instead of Candela's, needed to see some smokes. But it's all over now. Rogue will have to correct that. And they have corrected it in terms of their operator selection. Instead of bringing the ink, they will bring the glass, which is the right tool for the job, at least on that armory tank. The thing is, though, because they were unsuccessful in attacking armory, they will have to attack now onto a different site, ventilation. So we'll see if this is the correct tool for ventilation. Seeing that adjustment uh, from Rogue is good, but at the same time, different site, different tools. Right. Good way of putting it. So, round two, first defense here. You look back on map number one between Orglis and Reciprocity, and the attackers won almost every round. So four rounds for the defenders, eight rounds for the attackers. So, you imagine that the attackers would have a bit of an advantage, but both these teams are really aggressive in Orglis and Reciprocity, so not always the greatest of sample sizes here. Space Station can be quite aggressive, as can Rogue, but the aggressiveness from Rogue can be a bit toothless, actually, over the last four play days. So, yeah. Look for the way that this team uses some of its assets. One of which being Vertical, the new member to the team, who is still obviously adjusting in the way that they play around him. It's a bit different than the way that they used to play around somebody such as Super with the rules that they had before. Yeah, you know, the whole thing about this match, I mean, what you were talking about earlier is either this is going to take all 12 rounds or it's going to be a completely lopsided match for one team. Um, if it's going to be a lopsided match for one team, it'll be for Space Station. Because you said it yourself, over the last couple playdays, Rogue have really been struggling to show us anything. And here we go. This is a good start, at least in this round, as Vertical will take down Bosco. So, potential for the bounce back here. But it's only one frag. One frag, though, does come with another attached boon, and that is top four control. With that top four control, Rogue is going to be able to do quite a lot of work if they play it correctly. Clips is also in a good position by the main hallway. So, potentially a good pincer movement here from Rogue. Yeah, and opening things up by taking out Bosco, one of the best players consistently for Space Station, and one of their roamers, who's largely charged with getting kills. It's not exactly going to be the best thing. Rogue having possession from above, and look at SSG. They are just right now as deep inside a set as they can be. Thinking Nade, oh, barely gets out of there as Shuttle. It's down two great asphyxiating bolts. An impact as Redeemer's trying to open things up, so Thinking Nade can get another smoke in, but he'll miss, actually, and Slash amidst the smoke. Trying to cut off any rotates that we see. Shuttle had done some great work with these fixating bolts. He'll pick up a kill on Chala. Vertical is just in. He'll get pounced upon, but no, he grabs the kill on the Redeemer, leaving Rampy in a 1v5 with Diffuser down and almost hopeless circumstances for Space Station. As now Rampy towards the stairs will be cut off from Slash, holding the angle below and say goodbye to Rampy. Ineffective in that round, and Space Station overall collapsed upon in a matter of moments. Excellent play from Rogue. Here we go, Rogue. This is the Rogue we're used to seeing. That was a really well-conducted attack. 
They managed to do quite a lot of damage on the top floor, droning vertical in, and once they had that top floor control, they isolated the B-bomb uh, site and simply went for a plant. So, really well conducted. Um, the gas canister from Thinking Aid nearly able to uh, deny B control. The first one certainly did. The second one, though, missed, and because of that, SSG didn't have any tools to hold on to the B-bomb site. Interesting to note, there is no echo ban right now. We do have the maestro ban, but echo is still not being played. That could have been a useful tool that Space Station to locate and defuse bombs. might have been able to bring in the last round, but they didn't, and uh, it hurt them, that's for sure. Now, I'll be going back to Vent, and uh, it's uh, worth noting that when we saw Border last, there were no offsite plays. We saw Armory, Armory, Vent, Vent, Armory, Vent, Armory, Armory, Vent, Vent, Armory, Armory. So, we might see a repeat of that, um, as that seems to be the way that Border is actually stereotypically playing out uh, these days. Uh, not a lot of teams winning enough defensive rounds on this map to go to those offsides. It does happen, for sure, but uh, a bit of a rarity. Something worth noting about Space Station here, just from some Attackers stats on the side, in. is <laughs> the highs that this team has and the lows that this team has. Entering oh, yeah. today, Rampy led the way with the most kills with Bosco down in sixth place with 39 kills and Rampy having 46. Got to look a little bit deeper to find Thinking Nade, Chala, and Redeemer. And when you do find them, well, they got some stats on the other side of the coin that really aren't that great. The top five most deaths in NA Pro League so far, Redeemer, Chala, and Thinking Nade are in order. One, two, and three. Now, a, a big part of this does come to the fact that with three draws, Space Station has played the most rounds tied with Dark Zero. But you don't see any Dark Zero members up there. It's obviously a worrying sign because it shows how top-heavy Space Station can be. Which is interesting and a bit of a change of pace from the old Space Station when Chala used to be one of the primary frag getters on that team, along with Thinking Nate being up there too. It shows that the additions of both Rampy and Bosco have helped the team flourish in terms of kills, but also a pretty big disparity between the top and the bottom. Yeah, and to, just to be clear, the top heavy team, it's not a good thing. In a dream situation, your best possible team, everyone's getting about the same amount of frags. Of course, your fraggers are going to do a little bit more, but everybody should be able to contribute, and that's the most important thing. Vertical, ready to pounce, but he's waiting for the call. Needs to know exactly where his opponents are, and that's going to be Eclipse, who's looking to drone Vertical in right now. The call will be made on at least one of those two players. The second one in small office, and that position clearly also given away. Not a double, though, for Vert, as Bosco's able to get the refrag, and Space Station will keep it nice and even there. A poorly timed vault there for Vertical. To give a little bit of condemnation to Bosco and the way that he played that, not even getting the coverage to possibly prevent the kill on Rampy at the first place. So that definitely could have been something where Bosco could have stepped in and, and really been able to prevent Rampy's death. So, anywho, you lose your primary frag getter for Rogue and the Ash. And with a minute to spare, there's not a ton of time for Rogue to be able to make this push materialize. But they've done some great work on the back side of Workshop. You see from Slashug's perspective, there's an open hole that he can try to do some significant damage on. He's got two smoke grenades, and well, knowing there's a Jaeger on the board of Bosco, needs some serious investment from Rogue to be able to ensure that all ADSs are taken out. This entire bathroom wall being soft will present some unique opportunities to the glass, as now Shuttle will cut off any rotate from over on custom side of things. But Slash unable to land his shots, even with those opportunities, poses a a pretty big problem. Easily getting the diffuser down successfully as the rest of Rogue will try to fall off. Eclipse falls and easily very low on HP. A slash as well takes quite a bit of damage. Space Station finds themselves starting to warm up. Great coverage from both Easily as well as Slash trying to keep it in check for the rest of their team as Redeemer rotates on over. Shuttle will cut down Chala and a rotate is caught by Easily. Say goodbye to Redeemer. It's gonna be just systematic for Rogue as Shuttle from above eliminates Bosco and Space Station's retake is shut down and goes absolutely nowhere with the old Rogue rearing its head for the second round in a row, Michael, as you very correctly pointed out. Yeah, I think that's a good way to point it, uh, put it, Parker, is it does look like the old Rogue, so it's good to see that. Now, looks like we have a match on our hands. Armory lockers again for SSG. Last time we got to go here, it was a success for SSG. It's the only round that they have so far. In that previous round, Space Station did not have adequate control over the back of the workshop site towards the bathroom. In fact, they had a rotation into bathroom, but nobody playing bathroom, which is just forfeiting control to Rogue. Because of that, 
Rogue was able to take control and start their push into sight. They had all the right tools Defenders, protect your bombs from being for a sight push, attack. such as the glass, with those smokes able to really lay down the cover and allow for that diffuser to be planted. On top of that, the vertical pressure from Space Station was heavily alleviated. It did exist, it was not fully countered by Rogue, but it didn't accomplish anything. And because Space Station was unable, unable, ah, pardon me, unable to do anything from above, they really had trouble holding the site overall. Again, that round was the case, of, or was an example of Space Station relying solely on a smoke to deny a plant. You do not have to rely exclusively on a smoke, Space Station. There are other tools available. And we've been seeing, I think from Rogue, pretty consistent objective play. Uh, because that objective play has been so consistent and has executed well, and they've been able to take those two rounds. I have to imagine at some point Space Station is going to catch on to this and start bringing anti-plant operators apart from smoke. Yeah. Really actually amazing to not see uh, Redeemer playing the Echo here despite the fact that it's available and Rogue's lack of IQ as well would mean that your only real hard counter to the Yokais would come in the place of the EMPs, but the way that Rogue has been using the EMPs, they haven't really saved any of them for sight pushes. They've been expending them early on. Yeah. There's also the fact that Valkyrie's not being played, so there's a lot of interesting, uh, I think, operator selection going on. I can't think off the top of my head if there's a consistent Valkyrie player on Space Station, though. It just I mean, doesn't tend to be an yeah, operator that you run. Them. Yeah, but still, overall, so useful. I mean, we saw how useful it was in the previous match. Yeah. Here's the push right inside of CCTV. Say goodbye, Rampy absolutely shoved into the oblivion. As Slash does all the work for himself. No ADS is there, and ironic to see the Jaeger get taken down from so many throwables. Chala just narrowly misses the Ying as they both just dart by one another at hallway, just under 90 cam. Chala will make it back inside of sight. We're up an armory this time for Space Station's defense. Half the round has been exhausted, and the only frag has come on behalf of somebody who Space Station desperately needs to get on the board, Rampy. See if he's able to do it later on on this round, though. Easily takes down Redeemer as well, so Rogue really in control right now. There's only three Space Station members left alive, and they're all cowering in the sight, doing their best to hold on for dear exactly. life. We do have one inside office, but he makes his rotate back actually to Fountain, and because of that, is punished. Bosco goes down to very low HP. It's going to put him in a tricky spot when it comes down to his final engagement. His vertical is able to shut him down too outright, thinking is down on the floor, leaving just Chala in the one versus five. He will get one onto Eclipse, pulls out the shotgun. Waiting for a rush, he has the smoke to cover him right now. Thinking Nade finished off easily with a team kill and Vertical will shut down Chala. Rogue take the round. A little bit sloppy towards the end there, but other than that, completely dominant as they nearly had a perfect round if it weren't for that last player. Yeah, that's a team kill too. And then Chala did get the one pick on... Uh, yeah, it was, it was nearly a, a perfect round except for, except for Chala. Except for it wasn't. Yeah, except yeah. for it wasn't. It was but, almost perfect, but then it wasn't. Perfect. But what? Yeah, exactly. It wasn't. But they Close. won the round. Same, same. But different, but still same. It was a really good attack there from Rogue. A big part of that is how many picks they were able to get early on. A space Station has looked lost through most of this game. Yeah, I think it's I think it's safe to say, and I think it's a very a very appropriate and somewhat maybe critical assessment here. But Space Station does look very very lost, and I don't I don't understand Defender, what's going on with this team, especially when they did back. appear to have really good coordination that carried them the entire way through the qualifiers. They have come so close to drawing blood against all of their opponents, and they have just been utterly lackluster. In fact, two of their <laughs> two of their <laughs> lowest fraggers traditionally are carrying this team with Rampy, Bosco, and Thinking Nade combining for one kill. I don't care that kills don't necessarily matter. When you've got Vertical dropping a 10 bomb through four rounds, you're gonna have a bad time. Can I? I'm gonna regret it, but <laughs> as a joke, He's not being sarcastic. Maybe they're saving strats, Five Parker. You think they're saving strats, Parker? <gasps> Parker, are they saving strats? <laughs> you should see his face right now. I feel physical discomfort. <laughs> like my body wants to, like a star, my body wants to collapse <laughs> in on itself. No, at but, some point. But Space Station's not. That's bull. Um, 
Space Station, I, I don't know what's going on with them in this match. I they, really they don't. don't look they don't look very and, well prepared. And this is the opposite of the predictions we were we were making going into the match, if we're being honest as well. And I think what most the opposite of what most people expected. We still are early. I mean it's three one right now. Um, and we did see actually I think uh, a pretty even match the last time. No, actually, it was attacker favor. The last time border was played today was attacker sighted. Yeah. So that could be something that comes into play. As weird as it is to say attacker sighted in this meta, it could be a thing. Uh, vertical, though, early into B site will take down Chala. Pardon and me. And he goes for a second. Pardon me, Chala. I don't know if you're there, Space Station. Hello. If you could answer the phone, please. Yeah. What was that? I don't understand how Rogue is being able to just waltz right in. There's no barbed by the door. No goose. There's no goose. There's no cameras. Where is your pulse? Slap there you know. You there. now lose your smoke to a pretty routine fire through the window on vents. Yeah. Space Station just making exceedingly puzzling decisions time and time again. Bosco not even bothering to detonate that C4. There he will go but there's barely a scratch on Rogue, uh -oh. who with 90 seconds uh -oh. left, finds oh, no! himself in a great position, and it will get even better for them as Rampy cannot get the Diffuse, or cannot get the C4 off. Diffuse goes down, and a perfect round from Rogue. Not so much Rogue playing smart, but SSG in free fall this game so far. That C4 right there could have been a 3K. It was. It, it could have been a free K. It was probably going to be a two K, but it could have brought SSG back into the round, and it didn't. Um, I agree with Parker. Right now, SSG's in free for all, and this is the opposite of what most people expected going into this match. I mean, if it, I think what most people thought was going to happen was either it was going to be in a crazy, uh, crazy close match, and it could still very well be. Again, when we hit see that half transition, I think it could easily bounce back to be a close match. Or it was going to be Rogue put into free for all, but we're seeing the opposite happen here. So I guess a little bit of a changing of the winds for both these teams in this match. But still early days. Vertical having an excellent match there. You can see with 11 kills, and we still have players on Space Station who have yet to get a single kill. So that's tricky. Sees Rampy and Thinking Nate both on zero. Bosco with one. Bosco of all people. That you don't see every day. I mean, you you don't see. Period. Yeah, I'm... I, I don't, I don't honestly... I don't honestly, I don't honestly understand what's going on with Space Station right now. And I don't know if you can just simply chalk this up to the sides. Keep in mind that Space Station struggled against Orglis on this matchup, on this map in particular in that matchup, during the Invitational Qualifiers. Yeah. So it could just show that Space Station is not historically the best border team. It's true. Though I'm pretty certain we've seen Rogue struggle on the border as well a number of times. So who knows exactly? I Anywho. Mean, we have seen them play border so far in the season. It was a loss to Evil Geniuses, but Evil Geniuses are also a really good border team, as we know. It was a 7-3, but it was actually a 7-2 because EG forfeited a round to Rogue yeah. due to, uh, I think it was disconnect for a long time. Can't exactly recall the exact circumstances, but yeah, that's definitely something to mm -hmm. it's definitely something to keep in mind. So, anywho, not really having much of an answer for the way that Rogue has been playing either. They've been playing very aggressive. They've been pinpointing exactly where they need to go to get into the site, and they just waltz right in. And there's zero focus from Rogue or zero focus from SSG. They have no idea where it's coming from, which enables that bull rush style from Rogue. This worked so well. Finally, we see some barbed wire at the doorway that Vertical will wrestle with. There's also a castle not too far off. And oh, no, goodbye, Chala. Slash with a single Candela. Just walks right in. And a Yokai drone and another member. That's the Jaeger who's going to get caught out by Vertical. Don't seem to understand. Oh, Franklin with the double kill on Rampy as Vertical is just in and he's making everybody hurt. There's a Yokai drone from above, but SSG looks completely clued out for the time being. Leaving the two anchors on site, Michael in both the smoke and the echo as Thinking Nade attempts to get back to site, but he's going to make a, a bit of an interesting decision here. Running out the front door, 
trying to figure out if there's somebody playing nearby. It's full control for Rogue. The smoke's position will be given away. Easily will just narrowly miss the smoke getting back in towards sight, but all that needs to happen is Rogue needs to find Redeemer, and that'll be all she wrote. Candela's going off, thinking Nade takes out Shuttle in a 4v2 that still dramatically favors Rogue. Plant going Death down, vertical right. holding flank. Redeemer grabs one, and it's getting even closer. But it's a post plant. This is going to be very difficult. Harrowing, some would even say. But from above, there's Slash. Catches the Gnade, gets the double mark, lights up the feet, and easily will jump in. And that's a lock out from Rogue. A 5 1 lopsided first half. Indeed, this team seems to be going Rogue and Space Station. It's a failure to launch so far. This is the real Rogue. This is the Rogue we expected, or ha expected it early in the season, not in this match, but. Uh, it's great to see them finally showing up. Five rounds in a row. They lost the first one and have since then not stopped in their absolute domination. Now we get to go over to defense for Rogue, and they'll be starting things off on Vent, which is kind of interesting. Um, as usually you would see a uh, armory start for most teams, but not the case here. So... I mean, okay, so part of this is Rogue playing well. It's really important to note that they are playing exceptionally well. They're getting very aggressive. They're seizing every opportunity presented to them. Clips has yet to get a kill, apparently, which is... I mean, I don't really think that's, that matters, to be honest. It's probably more down to uh, the rest of Rogue taking all the kills. But um, a bu another big part of it is Space Station playing exceptionally poorly. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a little bit for both. And um, it's been really sliding in Rogue's favor. I mean, there's not much else to say. Strategically, Space Station has been really behind. They did, as you saw, at the towards the end of that half, they started to bring the Echo, but it was way too late. Um, and as soon as they started bringing the Echo, Rogue got wise to the fact that they could just take fights and win them, walk into sight and win. And uh, because, uh, because of that, at that point, the Space Station anchor started falling apart, so the Yokai Trones didn't matter because it wasn't an issue with the periphery of the site. It was an issue with the core of the site. And, yeah, I mean, Space Station really unable to hold on to anything there. We'll see how they manage on attack, though, because this could con completely change the momentum. It's possible. Highest rating in North America and the most kills prior to this match starting. Rampy has yet to find a single frag on the board, and that obviously, through seven rounds, hurts your team an awful lot. Now, mind you that 22 of those kills came in the same match, so obviously that number is going to be a bit skewed, but both he and Bosco are going to need to wake up and shake off all this rust that appears to have accumulated in, what, 24 hours? That, you know, it might be the opposite of rust. It might be, you know... Fatigue? Fatigue, yeah. We see a lot. I mean, it, it's the same for everybody, man. A lot of matches to play. Saw Valkyrie Cam get spotted in the hallway there. You don't even necessarily need an IQ scanner to be able to figure that one out. Vertical in great position. No, oh no, he's gonna get tracked by the IQ scanner. That's gonna be the vigil getting away with not even a single scratch on him. So Vertical will be able to retreat. He'll head up towards East Main and Rampy looking for his very first kill. He'll get it. There you go. Grab it. Rampy takes out Vertical and immediately pivots over towards Archives. This looks like it's actually complete control on that second floor. Michael through 90 seconds here for Space Station. This thinking Nate tears up the floor, and he's going to be joined by two other members of SSG above. Slow going here for Space Station, but rightfully so, considering the current score line, you do not want to see Space Station rush this. They have the advantage. You want to see them lock it out. Rampy looking to get a second as uh, Pulse of Slash has been droned out inside of Tellers. He's waiting for the rotation, but it's not happening. Slash is playing this nice and slow, which is the right call. But he is going to likely lose his life in just a second here. Goes for the peak as he sees the flashes, but oh wow, takes out Bosco out of pure luck. Rampy gets the refrag, but that pulse was full blind when Bosco went down. Unfortunate there for Space Station. Bosco dropped through the hatch as well, right as we saw Rampy flash the pulse of Slash and then blind fires from the, from the pulse is what ended up taking Bosco's life. Oh no, Redeemer, look up, way up. There's Shuttle sitting there, thinking Nate up top, as it's a great rotate from Shuttle. Two kills for him, as the rest of his team tries to hold off the remaining members of Space Station from getting into the site. Rampy and Chala in right now, with Rampy picking up yet another kill onto Eclipse as Chala has control. Great patience from Shuttle. 
good trigger discipline as Mark's going down on Nichala. Open that line of sight up with a C4. Get him while he's in the mid plant. Oh, oh no! Shuttle, no! Working against the clock and now Space Station in good position to be able to hold on. Shuttle watching to see if there's going to be a push out from the Hibana as Rampy can possibly push up on the shuttle at the top of the stairs. But this is going to be essentially a game of chicken at this point. Shuttle's position given away as he gets spotted on a drone. Heads on in, he has the open hatch inside of security. He'll drop into customs, look all the way over towards the doorway, and workshop. He's got to rotate there, but he's being robbed of any real angles. Lots of blind spots, and if he doesn't turn to his left, he'll see Rampy. Space Station finally, 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 finally get something going here with a win on attack and diffuser going down. That's the fifth diffuser we've seen planted in seven rounds, Michael. Yeah, and a big part of that was that Rampy was actually showing up to the match. Did a lot of work that round, and yeah, the diffuser has been kind of elusive, I think, for most teams uh, in this season, but not so, at least in that round. So the way that that round played out was actually kind of interesting because it was all over the place. Rogue were doing their best to get flanks off, and Space Station very rarely was actually monitor monitoring the flank. And because of that, what when it, ever it looked like Rogue was out of the round, need to locate and they would bounce bomb. right back with a flank and get a kill. And, or it would be a refrack, or they would deny the plant. But every time Space Station kept their man advantage and were able to get their own refrags and keep the ball rolling into sight to get that actual plant, which is the most important thing. There really isn't much to say about that other than, uh, than good job to get the plant down. Keeping that man advantage for Space Station. That whole round from the start to finish was a brawl. Rogue really looked like they were positioned perfectly to do something in the post plant. And that's why they conceded that second floor. They kept their bodies intact, they kept themselves alive, they retook top floor when they realized that Space Station didn't really have anybody watching flank. And that was exactly what you saw from Shuttle. He was able to pick up the 2K and almost got the plant down as well. A second sooner on that Nitro Cell going off. So there was some hesitation there. I think trying to get it off at the perfect time where Chala wouldn't have gotten off the plant because they know that if that Nitro Cell goes off, Chala falls off the plant, possibly kills the Valkyrie, who knows? If Shuttle pulls, that, uh, pulls out his phone and hits that button a little bit sooner, blows up the hole and then gets the kill onto the Valkyrie, that round goes in favor of Rogue and we're sitting on match point here. That is how much a second makes. I don't know if it was the C4 detonation as much as the angle play from Shuttle. He was looking at the wrong place. I mean, he was trying to get the full, like, fully vertical angle. He could have just stepped a little bit backwards there and he would have seen his prey. But I think a misunderstanding of where the actual plant spot was Maybe Shuttle hasn't played that angle too much, but yeah, it was that. It was it was the slow detonation, like you said. It was overall just a little too slow there from uh, from Shuttle. Unfortunate, but yes, you're right. It would have been a rogue round, very close one indeed. Now, going into this round, Rogue still very much in control, but Space Station looking to start bringing things back as they've managed to get that first attack. And now they'll be going to Armory. So here's the big thing: is we went to Vent first for Rogue on their defense, and which is a little bit weird. And it might have been why Rogue were unable to lock it out. We'll see. Control of monitors right now in CCTV, which doesn't go challenged by a lot of teams in Space Station bucking the trend as of late to attack over on Archive's side. They have to put their utility in towards Armory, which it's, it's very easy to just be able to push people back and essentially quarantine them, if I can use that turn of phrase, which is one that we use regarding Lion in this game. Make it very difficult for the rest of the defenders to retake. Often requires you to be able to go back and grab control of CCTV or monitor once you lose control of Armory or possibly even have somebody in a position to go for a run out as there will assuredly be an attacker on Repel watching that diffuser. Really good job from both teams though to be able to get the diffuser down. Like I said, five through seven rounds, I would imagine that this round will be no different as the plant denial that's on Rogue's side likely be one, possibly two C4s depending on what the bandit is running and then easily holding the smokes as well. Overall, pretty basic setup here from Space Stations. They've got the flank hold, they've got the armory wall open, not as much as they would like because they don't have the thermite available to them, but they are setting themselves up for that push. The glass is going to be a huge part of the push. Slash Hug from below will take out Thinking Nade the Buck, who's trying to do some damage. Rampy gets eclipsed before Redeemer can. And you can see everybody is all the way into half wall. Space Station 
have to get that plant down. Rampy will eliminate Slasha because he's attempting to come back to site. Perfect flash there from Rampy, and he's going to get a double. There you go. Bosco also able to take out easily, leaving just vertical in the one versus four. He's not even going to be able to take out Rampy in the initial engagement, but the second he will, he's to find three more. Beamer on low HP. The flank watch from the window, though, doesn't really matter how much HP you have if your body isn't exposed. Space Station will execute it. Attack onto the site. And uh, good flank isolation to take that round. It's but, almost procedural from the way that Space Station did that. They took all of the land inside of the wall by armory. They were able to cut off Rogue. Rogue knew they needed to rotate immediately when they lost control. And SSG was there to pick them off. So, I mean, it was pretty routine Yep. from Space Station. There's not really much else. I mean... That's a, that's, a, that's a very clean armory take, right? Yeah. You don't even necessarily need presence you, from below. You just basically push them back. You yeah. clobber them. Rampy, in particular, that great play inside of CCTV, then carrying over towards the main stairs. Defenders protect yeah, Rampy was on the flank watch. By yep. Attackers. Then he just rotates when he no longer needs the flank watch because the plant's been down and Redeemer's taken up flank. I mean, it was a pretty pretty standard take there. I really like to see that from Space Station. You could see uh, the full team now coming alive as they've won two in a row. Uh, and Rogue have uh, been struggling here on the defensive half, unable to win anything. I mean, we could, we could, <laughs> Space Nation could still win this. It's actually not, it's not uh, too crazy to imagine. They only need two rounds to even things up. It's still close. It's definitely doable. And when you look at the fact that there's been one defensive victory at the moment, <laughs> I mean, obviously that works well for Space Station. At least for the time being. All right. It's weird. I think, you know, remember how we always like to say we're going to the defensive meta? I think it's more like the... <laughs> I think it's more like all of the all of the maps are, are seeing a huge shift in what is uh, the preferred side. Because it was the same thing in Border when we saw Orglis versus Reciprocity play on it earlier today. Yeah. We saw, what, five defense wins in a 7-5 match? So it was lightly attacker favored. But... Um, it was still attacker favor. And we're seeing now very, very, very attacker favor border when this wasn't it wasn't the case in the past. Be interesting the way that Space Station has changed Rampy's roles around, especially in this matchup and the way that they have worked on attack so far through the two rounds. They've put Rampy on that dedicated flash with a flank watch as Ash, which you mentioned last round. He basically just sat inside of monitors for a minute and forty seconds and then when he needed to he came alive. It's been Bosco who's been doing I guess, like, main point for this team with a bit of covering fire from Redeemer and on rare occasion thinking Nate, too. It's just interesting to see the way that they're doing that. They're keeping Rampy in positions where he's not really in harm's way and, of course, was an R4C. The dying ends of a round. They're three speed and keeping all of his stun grenades available. Rampy is quite literally able to just tackle anybody that comes in his way, which is exactly what we saw through the previous two rounds. We got to actually see a good look at it firsthand as well through the spectator system, so. It's funny that Space Station has done that because, you know, that Coastline matchup in particular, it was Rampy coming in and getting all the kills, being assisted by drones. Now, with an armory defense, you're going to have to fear for your life if you're playing over by that half wall. A good impact nade is actually going to come out, and then a bandit trick as Rampy picks off easily. You'll see Shuttle be able to fall back, knowing that there's a buck beneath. There's not going to be a lot of time for Shuttle to do too much. And that means that the armory wall is as good as gone as the bandit battery gets picked off with thinking nade below. Expect somebody from Rogue to be dispatched to try and wrestle with Thinking Nate, the bottom four. But with Space Station having a numbers advantage, that means that Rogue would be essentially in a 3v4 on site. Flash is coming out to clear the ADS, and the uh, Ash Charge going to hit the half wall. Not sure what they're trying to accomplish with that one, to be honest, but utility being expended here from Space Station. They have a decent chunk of control, and since there's nobody from Rogue defending from half wall, it's going to be a really passive retake strategy here for Rogue. The most upfront they have is Shuttle trying to hold in such a small office. And he's going to be a really big part of this defense. If he can make some work happen here, it would be really excellent. But he's actually going to be forced to rotate because of the smokes from Redeemer. These smokes are going to be a really big part of a success if Space Station manage it. Shuttle will take out Rampy, though. Vertical on to thinking. That's one for Eclipse as well as he peeks from the lockers. 
He gets refragged by Chala, and Chala with the pistol out goes for another. He will get it. Excellent gunplay from Chala so far, but the plant needs to go down. That's the main thing. And he's now trying to plant in B with nobody to support him. Bosco, though, cuts off rotation, so I spoke too soon, leaving just vertical. He challenges onto Bosco, unable to land the shots, and now he's gonna try and address Chala directly in the B side, but does he see the foot? He does. Excellent down there onto the Habana of Chala. Now one versus one. Bosco has the cutoff and he will win the fight. Space Station take another round, three in a row. Both these teams proving that they know this map quite well. In and out, and Bosco hanging on Sandwich, watching the cross from the Bandit over on Armory side. That information was not made aware of two rogues. So you have Bosco playing on that window on Repel, Sandwich, in between the two locker sections. You've got the Bandit of Shuttle playing over an Armory wall. There was an opportunity for the Bandit to possibly go across to monitors and CCTV and then continue onwards. That doesn't happen because he doesn't know. And the lack of information ended up being a killer for Rogue. How many defense wins do we have now, Parker? One defensive win. One. And we have seven successful diffuser plants through nine rounds. Now, usually we don't see that many diffuser plants. I touched on it earlier, you know, plants happen, they do. <laughs> but in North America, it's, it's, you know, every couple rounds, it feels like. And here, it, it's, it's happening so frequently. It's a bit of a weird situation. Unless my numbers are wrong, so far we have seen five before today's matchup. So we have already smashed that number. Yeah. Just like you smash that like and subscribe button, it really helps us out. Is there a like button on Twitch now? Did they add that? What's a follow button? People could also be watching this on YouTube. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Don't be such an elitist. Well, I don't know if. Oh, all right, yeah, sure. What? Okay, Parker. Thank you. I'm just gonna pass on that. Five four right now, for uh, for Rogue. Still, they have the advantage, but this is definitely looking like the close match we were expecting going into it. Now that Space Station have managed to bounce back, clearly. Neither team really having success on defense. In fact, Space Station in a way have the advantage because they have the only defensive win. Um, yeah, quite interesting. As uh, this is not typical on border. At least if you look far enough back, I mean, maybe this is just how things are going now. Rampy pushing his way into CCTV. He's going to take out the hallway camera and uh, establish his flank watch. You can see he's well practiced in uh, his role there as the flank watch. Uh, a lot of people might be wondering, why would you put the Ash on flank watch? Well, I'll tell you, because Ash is your fast operator, able to rotate off of the flank into the action when it comes down to the last 30 seconds without any pause, really. So, yeah, putting the three speed on the flank watch makes sense. You could do it with the Habana, you could do it with the IQ, but it's often the Ash, surprisingly, unless you really need her for a specific entry. This is a bit of a difference here. Rogue is dispatching somebody early on, and Rampy with the kill hole looking for two. We'll find one at least as he goes fishing and hooks the slash hug. Cannot connect onto Clear. vertical, so, and shuttle rather. An impact trick will at least take out one round of Xkaros from Chala, and that will deprive him of any hard destruction left, as it will only be a very small opening into that armory wall, which will at least work in terms of a deterrent. A deterrent. From a visual perspective, you're not going to want to guard that because you know that you can get picked off through the hole in the wall. From below, Thinking Nade will set up yet again, and he sees the ADS. He'll take it out as the rest of Rogue will just completely back up. And this is exactly what you anticipate with an armory push. Get back as fast as you can. Yeah. The Space Station have the advantage. They don't need to squander it. They just take this nice and slow. It should go their way in the last 50 seconds. Easily's gonna drop down though and take out Thinking Nade. That really should not have happened. Props to Easily for making it work. He lost a lot of HP in the Endeavor, but it worked out in the end, and that's what's most important. Redeemer walks right on in and sees one body. There will be a couple things that are yellow in his line of sight, one of which will be the corpse of Easily now, but then also the toxic canister that Easily will get in a kill from the grave. Michael, it happened again. The diffuser is down, and Rogue will have to come back into the site and fight for a retake. But he went long distance. Space Station as they look far back. As the Castle of Eclipse gets down, well, good thanks there, Shuttle, to be able to pick him back up. Vertical picks down Bosco, leaving Rampy and Chala in good position, but the diffuser right now sitting in front of a soft wall, and Shuttle almost landing what's needed to take out the Hibana, but, oh no, Rampy with the 
two piece. And as Eclipse falls, Shuttle gets caught in the crossfire. How often do you see that one? Rampy coming alive. Congratulations as he soars past 50 kills as well. And we now find ourselves, Michael, all tied up. 5-5. Five, five. Would you have guessed it? We're going to need all 12 rounds yet again. <laughs> and we'll be certainly fighting for our longest play day thus far. I can see the chat right now as uh, Rogue put themselves up 5-1, to one, already counting Space Station out, as we did. And then the immediate bounce back as we see Space Station, well, do just that, putting us at 5-5. Five, five. It, you know, doesn't happen very often, but here you go. It's a shame that it wasn't a perfect half and then followed back by another perfect half. That would have been a story to tell, but it's darn near close. That last round, Space Station performed a pretty routine armory take, and Rogue was unable to counter it. That is the story. For the second time. Yeah. Actually, for every time so far, as the defense has been sputtering on both sides of the coin. It's weird. It is really, really weird how non-existent the defense is for both teams. I. I'm now, I am now actually impressed that Space Station took one round on the first half, given how Rogue have been playing on their defensive half. Weird. It has become very apparent over the last four rounds that we are indeed going on a rocket ship. We are going on a trip on our favorite rocket ship, I believe is what they say for Space Station. So mm -hmm. I put Space Station in position to tie again. It's from a song, right? It's, it's just it's their, it's their spam. Oh, okay. With the emotes. Right, right. Twitch chat is a wonderful beast, but they come up with some pretty creative things from time to time. As for Space Station, the creativity that they have shown on attack hasn't really been there. It hasn't really been all that creative at all. It's been pretty standard procedure. Armory takes, and now pressure on the ventilation workshop will probably be very similar. Rampy has woken up through his flank watch and has also taken more of an aggressive role as well. So for Rampy, he's going to be at the forefront of these fights as he has been over the last two rounds, which was a change from where they had him previously as well. We're going to need every single round to get this completed. Space Station is going to be fighting to break this curse of the draw. They have three of them. They're looking for a victory here, but the next round will be a major deciding factor. So one minute in, drone work done. Allocation of operators Ooh. and a fight that Bosco should have won. He will lose to Vertical, who is running Riot right now all over this map. The vigil downed. This is an opportunity for a reset here, and that's exactly what will happen. Wow. Well shot. Shot there from Vertical and able to rotate back to site as well with just a sliver of HP. This could be the match point for Rogue. They just needed one little kick. From, my, from what we've been seeing for, so far, it just seems like Rogue needed to start a round with an advantage. And this might be the right moment for the advantage to pull through in favor of Rogue. We'll see. Thinking they get to start opening things up as will Chala on the Habana drop downs and soft holes now available. But Vertical gets his second in the round as he rotates up the main stairs and takes out Thinking Nade from the small office. That's poor information management from Space Station. Rampy also missing out on an opportunity to get a kill as well as not looking to his left. Right now he's exposed to a player, that's the Pulse, but Slashaw gonna miss some really crucial shots there. Putting on Rampy on low HP, softening him up for Vertical to get his third kill. Chala and Redeemer now the last ones for Space Station. As we come down to the final 30 seconds, Chala's in sight and he's got a good plant position. This could easily be a lockout here. Redeemer's the perfect operator to cover this plant. And amazingly, it goes down. The spray from the castle, not gonna land enough to get the kill. Redeemer also gonna miss some shots, but he gets one eventually. Slash Dog will get the first one for himself. And Chala, the last one in a one versus two. Vertical vying for that 4K shuttle still on full HP, able to influence this round greatly if he can cover the disable. But this is really poor time management. As the diffuser is down, Chala just needs to cover from above. And oh no, he doesn't have enough soft destruction. Vertical's gonna commit. He's sticking it. We're seconds away and we will see a successful disable. Oh no, the first defensive round goes to Rogue. Or first defensive round for Rogue, at least. Diffuser still went down. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, and it, it, it just keeps going down. <laughs> yeah. So at minimum, Rogue is going to at least get a draw, which is good from their perspective in regards to their successes or lack thereof over the last three play days, last four play days rather, not quite achieving their potential that they know that they are capable of. I mean, at the very least, a draw is pretty good. For Space Station, their best hope is a draw. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> if they get a draw, it would be their fourth, fourth draw in a row. Fourth draw in a row. Oh. Space Station cursed, <laughs> it appears. Dude, they, ha they have they to be to getting tired of draws. I mean, they can. I, I bet they are exasperated right now, just in, in, in their comms, just going, ah, guys, not again. Not again. And what is this? We got, a, uh, we got a 20 bomb Tom reporting for duty with Vertical here. 20 one and six. Keep in mind that the record set by Rampy is 22. If Vertical picks up a number of kills here, we could actually see that number get broken. Which would be incredibly rapid breaking of said records. But it is important to remember, Ten seconds left. for all of you out there who have been mentioning this and have not been heard, that uh, yes, okay, records are being broken, but there are also two more rounds, which means five or 10 more total potential kills for each individual if we're talking about, you know, kills to be had. Um, so, I mean, that is that is important to keep track of. I mean, Pengu set his record, what was it, 20, 21? 20 with one coming in a rehosted round that I don't think counted, so there's people who will quarrel over whether or not right. that actually as that counts if that was an actual but kill or not. If I'm not mistaken, that was in the 5-5 five five era. From my, from my understanding, yeah, it was. So it was, it was two rounds shorter. Um, to be fair, though, that was also with overtime on land. Oh, that's true, so yeah. So in theory, it could have gone even higher had Penta, now G2, not been quite so successful if that had gone to overtime, right? So True, true, true. Anywho. Well, moving on, yeah. I mean, it would be very shocking if we saw the record broken here again by Vertical. Well, with his reflex sight on every single gun, he's just going to continue to run round and round and round. He goes with Vigil, and now on Jaeger, where he'll stop, nobody knows. And he is within distance of being able to take the record holder, Rampy's accomplishment away from him. If you lose Vertical early, well, that'll be that. But you've got to imagine that Vertical is obviously going to be gunning for it. And it's good motivation for his team as they sit within one round of taking a big victory over SSG. There's going to be some impact tricking going on here onto this armory wall as well. And you know, Vertical is sitting on that Valkyrie camera, Michael, mm -hmm. waiting for the intel. Yeah, you could see some really good Valk cams established from Rogue. Space Station does have the IQ, which can be very influential, but uh, see if he's actually able to find the cams. Thus far, he has not found the most crucial ones. The Habana hole is good. Flashes onto half wall means that SSG does not know there is no one playing half wall. The Ash Charge will lead into that fact as well. Trying to do some damage to anyone in that, in that position, but there is no one there. As we come down to the last minute, Space Station are set up well. They have done a little bit of damage to the dock, which isn't going to actually matter, but this could be an easy take. Could go either way, though. Rampy's lying prone inside of monitors. He's got a punch hole that he could possibly spot Vertical on if Vertical does rotate out of Fountain, which is where we saw him playing as he's now over in offices, just watching that main doorway. Easily in his own shroud of smoke, trying to take one down. Bosco falls and so does Eclipse as both teams pick up an opening kill here with 40 seconds left in this round. Another will be spotted inside of the site and oh no! There's Redeemer to finish things off with easily there, but where are you vertical? Paging vertical, get to the site! He'll sprint on in. Defender Diffuser does not go down. Rampy takes out Shuttle, leaving yeah, just Slash and Vertical and there you go. Diffuser goes down. Every single round, Space Station has gotten one. Vertical finds a kill. That's lucky number 21. Is he going to be able to do more? He's only got Thinking Nade and Redeemer left. Slashhug falls to Thinking Nade, and it's going to have to be vertical. He breaks the record if he clutches this round for his team. But he's got a buck below him, and he's not going to get it. Thinking Nade will very swiftly take him out, and for their fourth match <laughs> in a row, <laughs> Space Station will fight for the draw. Don't you love him? Uh. Space Station sure loves him. Four draws in a row. Vertical, one kill uh, short of the record. 6-6 six, six for both teams.